Hey, what is up, everyone? It's Rich. All right. Happy Monday. Happy Memorial Day. Um, it still almost feels like the weekend. It feels like the weekend and like a weekday all in one. Face orange biting nails. Nice. <laughs> that's that's the kind of reaction that I need from people. Uh, so, Farben, what's up? We've got Hal there, Jonas, Daniel, B-Flow. What is up, B-Flow? Oh, oh, face orange biting nails. Awesome book to check out. Okay, I'll have to look into that. Let me, I'm going to screen cap that because I will never remember that. I'll be like orange, what? So Farben, you said, I think YouTube even filters comments on the chat box. Oh, well, just sent your email later uh, someday. It really does filter. Damn, YouTube is insane. What's funny is actual spam bots can even post links as i've seen them flood channels yeah i don't know i don't i have no filters set up on my channel at all um but i've noticed i've noticed um that the chat will sometimes uh pull down comments that i've made to, in other chats because i was um sometimes reply to people and depending on how you set it up it'll like literally uh it'll like i've written messages and it only posts the emoji and it removes all the text I've seen it happen a few times. It's very, very weird. What's up, Art Jedi? How are you? Um, but yeah, so I was, I was, I popped on a Twitter for a split second this morning and um I saw like um some sketches from someone. I was like, you know, we should just do a show or like let's do a week on sketches and sketchbooks. Um, I had just done a demo on drawing hair for um Patreon. And I I I like the way that J. Scott Campbell shows examples of drawing hair. In, in his Danger Girl sketchbook. So I was using that as an example of um, simple big shapes that you can use to kind of like um, subdivide the like the scalp. So, um, oh, you just started collecting Campbell. Wow, okay, you're going to have your work cut out for you because Jeff has got a lot of work and a lot of covers. Now, do you collect variant covers or are you doing interiors? Uh, a week on sketch sounds awesome. Yeah, I think so too. Um, let's see. I'm doing great. Going to launch Amrak on Finch's channel next uh, Monday. Wow, nice, dude. That's awesome. Very cool. His rough stuff is great. Yeah, I have the rough rough stuff sketchbook somewhere. I don't know if I have it in here. I might. I have a small. I don't think my rough stuff is in here. I might have put those in like storage. Kind of rotate stuff in and out. I was telling Kelsey, I. I try, I try to keep my book quantity. I mean, I actually have a huge bookshelf over there. You can't really see it, but I have a bookshelf there that's got, I don't even know, probably several hundred books. And I've got another bookshelf that's like right there. But other than that, I don't I don't have any like long boxes or short boxes of comics in my office. I, I or do I have one? I have a short box behind my scanner. I haven't looked in it in a couple of years. I think it's Mignola stuff. I'm not sure though. What's up, Skip? I sent you some Will Weston this morning. Hopefully you got it. Or if not, check your email because I sent you some um, figure drawing breakdowns from Will Weston. I'm a busy bee, man. Like I said, I actually, this is probably going to be the last month that I do some things. I'm going to have to weed out something. I'm not sure what I'm going to do, but um, I can't, I can't keep working as many things as I'm doing right now. It's, it's too much. I think, um, I've got to make some decisions. There's going to be some cuts. <laughs> so anyway, let's get to this. When's Blaster Kid launching? Well, that's a good question. That's exactly why I need to start cutting some stuff out of my schedule because I'm too busy. Too, too busy. But as soon as possible, I'd like to get Kelsey to color a few pieces. And, um, uh, you know, that's that's really about it. So we'll, we'll figure it out. It, it, it should be very soon. Um, okay, so let's let's get to Campbell because it's it's a not a huge sketchbook, but it's pretty big. Uh, what's up, Powell? How are you? Uh, let me see if my Photoshop will. And you can keep the chat going. I've got my phone. Yeah, okay, it did work. Okay, good. All right, so we're gonna go into Photoshop. This is the back cover. Let me get to the front cover. Oh, my cat is excited. What is up, Kitty? All right, so the cover. This was an interesting. There was an interesting transition going on with um, Jeff's. Um, structure at this time he started giving um i don't know if knobby would be the right word but he used to have like kind of like uh, his characters were elongated but there was they were pretty smooth like lines and as he started doing kind of more of this um tonal work he started really like carving stuff out and you can really see on this like abby chase 
how extreme all the silhouettes are it's pretty it's pretty insane um but uh he didn't keep it too long but i mean like even her knee it's like very hard shapes i'm gonna catch up with the chat really quick campbell's drawings of lost and true blood characters are pretty sweet caricature for sure but excellent nonetheless yeah yeah no i mean he's really good at caricatures so anyway here's the cover we're gonna go into the book and start to check it out this is the back cover i guess just because it was open it's nice I like, I mean, Jeff is really, really creative with his books. I think he's always got like a high quality that, that you could definitely look, there's a lot of different ways to do sketchbooks. I don't consider this like a sketchbook, like you would buy at a comic book convention, but in terms of published sketchbooks, he gives you so much content. I mean, he's got a flip book so you can watch characters animate on the page corners. He does stuff like this, where you get from blue pencil to pencil to like finished inks and colors. I mean, he's very, very creative and has always had a very um, advanced, advanced approach to his, his content. You know, he really fought for this stuff too. That was another thing that people didn't really see from the outside is at, at Wildstorm. I mean, he would really have to say like, I want like an extended sketchbook at, in the end of gen 13, and they would probably tell him no and then he would explain why it should be there and so um you know to his credit all those things that he pushed for really uh, set him apart from everyone else let's see I'm catching up with the chat really quick hey what's up daniel how are you which version of photoshop do you have i have cs6 on my other laptop i downloaded the new one and can't do crap with it like i could with cs6 uh i think this is cc i used to have cs6 um, but I haven't updated my Photoshop in a couple of years. This is like probably the original version of CC. I, I, um, I only really use Photoshop for the videos. There's, I don't really do too much. I, I mean, I guess I did digitally color that piece, but, um, I don't know. At some point I'd like to get like their suite and get like, like five of the, the Adobe programs. I wish J. Scott Campbell had made more comics though. Yeah, me too. What's up, Luke? How are you? Luke always starts off with a holler if you can hear me. Um, let's see. Jay, um, I have physical and digital versions of this one. Yeah. Well, you know, I've worked, I've worked on Danger Girl. So I have um, those absolute books, which have the oversized hardcover. Then I have the floppies. They, I mean, I got comps of it because I worked on it. This is nice. This is for Richard Starkings. This is Hip Flask. This, um, all the lettering on these pages too, this is J. Scott Campbell actual font that you can get from Richard Starkings and Comic Craft. He did, I think, three custom fonts. One was for J. Scott Campbell. I think there might've been a Matarero one. Um, and I can't remember what the third was. It, it Maybe Turner? I can't remember who it was for. I started writing Tanya, Lady of the Blade today. Oh, very cool, man. Hey, what's up, Lars? How are you? Love his early work. It's more cartoony. Yeah, I have the CS Creative Design Suite. Use Clip Studio Paint now. Clip Studio is really good, you know. I tend to I tend to do my photo editing or not photo, but art editing in in Photoshop more. Clip Studio is really good for um, art demos. So here's some of his thumbnails. His thumbnails are great. I have a friend that collects his prelims, and they're they're amazing. You really get a lot of bang for your buck but these are actual actual thumbnails like where he's actually drawing like the thumbnails i've got a lot of his gen 13 books yeah he worked on gen 13 he did five issues of the mini series there's a zero issue and then he worked up to about issue 16 i think but there's a few fill-ins along the way but yeah it's good stuff if you look at Gen 13 issues two through to the end, you'll see my name in them because I assisted on the book. DC did a deluxe volume one hardcover for Gen 13. Ooh, I don't know if I've seen that. That's pretty cool. Got a little grifter and Abby Chase. This is nice too. I mean, he gives you all these different iterations of this, this uh, piece and also the um, comic box cover of Abby and I think this is Sydney in Paris, but the scripter is cool. He actually put his arm behind his back. That's pretty funny. It's a tough shot, tough pose to pull off. 
and Campbell and Garner were just so amazing together. Such a great combination. Perfect. Perfect in every way. It was it was really incredible seeing what Alex could do over Jeff, to be honest. It was like, man, they they were ah, just killer. Killer, killer, killer. Yeah, well, what I like about um Photoshop is um the the stuff beyond drawing tools. Dodge burn some of the editing tools and stuff like that. This is, uh, I ink this cover. This is for Danger Girl Kamikaze. It was a hard piece to do. A lot of stuff. Jeff was penciling so tight, too. Man, you really, really were like, it was took a lot of patience to do. It felt very slow. What was the title he never finished that got put? Yeah, Wild Siders. Yeah, yeah. I kind of like Wild Siders in hindsight, to be honest. I've, I I went back and bought all the issues not too long ago. I had them, but I couldn't find them. So I just I went and went on eBay and just bought another set because it would have been faster than trying to look through my storage to find them. <laughs> but it's it's really good. I mean, honestly, is there's almost too many panels, though. That would be my only criticism on Wild Siders is that it, the pages have a lot of panels. Too many, I think. Yeah, thank you for thank you, Lars, for getting the super fun Sunday shirt. It's exciting. Um, I really, really appreciate it. I thought that they turned out great, and the material and stuff like that is nice too. All right, these are great. So these are Sandra Hope's uh, inks on Jeff, and she does a real nice job. This is a great one. This is for this is like a variant cover for a European, or I guess it was a kind of like a Wizard magazine called Comic Box. What's up, Rich? I can finally follow a live during the week, thanks to the veterans. Right. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Thank you to all the veterans out there, too. I really appreciate it. I think some people know my whole family is military. So, um, you know, we've had multiple people in my family fight in wars for the United States. Several were killed, too. So it's tough. You know, it's hard, hard hard holiday you know you never really know what to say all right these are cool he has so much fun I, he jeff is so methodical it's hysterical like how much detail he puts into like his thought process and breaking this stuff down hey what's up cap tokyo hey guys have you seen the new tool ai tool for photoshop i have to admit it's kind of cool but scary at the same time no, I, I don't, I don't, I haven't seen it. I mean, I've seen plenty of AI stuff. I can't imagine it's any better than any of the best stuff I've seen. Um, you know, the, it's weird because I was talking to a friend about this over the weekend. The only thing that bothers me about AI at this point right now is I don't like artists lying about it. That That's where it gets a little weird to me is just if someone, uh, you know, posts AI art and then says it's something that it's not, it's a little kind of it's weird if you're gonna draw it that's one thing but i i don't know it's it's gonna be a very very weird next few years music I and mean, there's a whole bunch of stuff even writing i mean i saw someone that had a comic book pitch i think the art looked like it was ai generated and i honestly think that the pitch was ai generated i i thought of i didn't think about it initially but after i after i thought about it for a few hours i was like you know what I'm like, I think that the whole thing was AI. So that's weird to me. I saw a poem today written by AI. And it was not, I mean, it wasn't great, but it wasn't bad either. So yeah, it's 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 weird. It's going to be a weird transition. This is nice. Crazy times. It got, the thing with AI too is it got good so fast. I mean, in less than a year, it went from very primitive, almost abstract kind of art uh, to like, fuck, man. <laughs> you are AI, Zaid? Well, I still like you. Well, there's there, there's music YouTube channels that are totally AI. It's pretty funny. I've caught a few. So these were load screens for the video game. I don't know how many of you had the, the Danger Girl video game or ever played it. But there was uh, load screens in the game, and this is art from the game. 
Adobe Firefly. I, yeah, I, I haven't I haven't seen it to be honest. There's so many different programs um, that are popping up. You know what I mean? I see it on YouTube. They like I, it'll get recommended to me occasionally, and I'm like, eh. I kind of wonder what it's what what AI is going to do though for like digital artists. I think that that's that's where it gets like super crazy. Because if you're like a digital painter that does like fantasy art, I mean, you're going to be competing against a slew of AI generated, you know girls with dragons and whatever all this stuff is and i mean they're going to be able to pump out you know a thousand images a day where someone that's a digital painter is starting from scratch oh look richard friending these he's so good this one i too but i didn't sign it because there was no room um but yeah i that's going to be tough for people i think to to i don't know how you how you can um hold your own against that amount of quantity you know I tend not to click on them when YouTube recommends those videos. It just makes me depressed. AI was supposed to take the jobs we didn't want. I know, right? I I never, I mean, to be honest, like, if, like I never even knew that AI would be able to draw. Like, I mean, it, it just, oh, you didn't either, Kitty. Okay, my cat didn't know either. It never occurred to me, you know. I'd seen filters in Photoshop that could turn, you know, like a photo into like pen and ink or whatever, but. Yeah, never. I never really thought that there would be something that would um, actually be able to create stuff. I saw a friend of mine sent me a bunch of stuff. I mean, it looked just like Joe Matarera. I mean, it, you wouldn't mistake it for Joe Matarera, but it was it was really really high quality cartoony stuff, basically that that could fall into a Joe Matarera category. It's, it's I I said it's game over, game over. Oh, my cat's getting very upset. It's all right. They're not going to have AI cats yet. Clip has a basic color specific feature that pulls from AI to lay a base, but for illustrations, it's a weird mush. Hey, what happened with Jeff Loeb, J. Scott Campbell comic? I know. You know what? That's a good point. What did happen to that comic book? I don't know. I mean, Jeff definitely did pages from it, but I, I really don't know whatever what what, what, came, what became of it. These are my inks too on these. This and this one. I worked on Danger Girl Seven. Was the book that I helped out on. It was uh, Tom McWeeny, I think, was inking him, and then Tom was starting to have some um, hand problems. So, I don't remember what I was working on before that. I don't know if I was inking Travis, and then I was helping out. Oh my God, I was drawing and forgot the stream was going. It's all right. Don't give up artists of all types right now. They're drafting bills and legislations to regulate AI. Yeah, no, definitely don't give up. I mean, I think, you know, if anything, continue to draw because um, it'll, regardless, you'll have more ability than someone that only uses AI. So if it, if it really, really turned that way where like, you had to compete against AI. If you had drawing ability, you would be better than someone that didn't. You know, you would be able to pick better images. You would be able to work from those images better. So uh, that's like a worst case scenario is your art skills would 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 come into play. I don't know what it's going to do for music, though. Have you heard some of the music? It's crazy. You're, you're going to be able to, in probably three years, be able to punch in. Like, you're going to go, I want this person singing over this music. And it's going to be able to, some people don't care. That's the weird thing. I am a Danger Girl fan. Right. Me too, Cap Tokyo. I actually enjoy reading Danger Girl every couple of years. I'll grab out the hardcover and read it. And it's a fun, it's a fun story to read. Yeah. You know, Jeff, Jeff is actually, um, I, I don't know if fun would be the right word. It's very rewarding when you're finished with it, but it's it's very, um, like I kind of said earlier, you have to have a lot of patience. It's very slow going because of the way that Alex Garner sort of established an inking style on Jeff. It's it's not a real quick um, process inking him. You, you really have to be careful with every single line. Richard, who is Danger Girl? Just joining the chat now. Danger Girl is a comic book that came out um, in the late 90s by J. Scott Campbell, who's kind of more known for cover art, kind of at Marvel mainly. Um, do you ink prefer tight or loose pencils? I suppose it may depend on the ink or pencil or dynamic. I I like both. I, I, I don't, um, you know, it depends. It really depends on the artist, to be honest. 
these are cute so a lot of this work was all prelims for danger girl like he would come up with concepts like you know obviously there was going to be maybe a danger uh, a desert adventure and so he'll just start banging out you know 20 30 50 drawings of what the characters might wear the people that they might meet he's he's really um he's really into it and you know he's always he always seems to give kind of a nod to his favorite influences so you know you'll get a little indiana jones vibe or james bond or whatever it is the music thing already exists it's called diff svc yeah yeah i've heard some of them i mean people have been posting different iterations you know kurt cobain singing over smashing pumpkins or rap things where it's like tupac over something else it's pretty trippy I mean, electronic music is really going to be in trouble because it's just going to be able to pump out EDM like no nobody's business. So what's Gian says, to all artists here asking about AI, follow the concept art groups of artists. There you will find more answers than the legal implications, not someone who shouts game over. Take care. Right. I don't get involved in the arguments online. It's it's too volatile and people are very emotional about it. I just kind of look at it as, um, uh, you know, it's here, it's here to stay. And, you know, you'll either have to compete against it or not, depending on what you do. If you have a fan base, I don't think it's going to, it won't affect people as much. You know what I mean? Because they're already, they're into what you do. So that's, that's where it helps. An idea. Let's all stop drawing and playing music so AI has nothing to duplicate, right? <laughs> Too late for that. It's got plenty of material to pull from. Danger Girl was before the DVD. Imagine him pausing VHS and the pictures being all wobbly. Guess he must have referenced from the Laserdisc editions. Yeah, probably. I mean, he definitely had a Laserdisc player. When I met him in 95, he had a Laserdisc player. So... He's always been into reference, though. I mean, J Jeff is a guy that uses a lot of reference, um, not necessarily to draw what he draws, but he really likes to have the details in. So um, that's that's where he he flexes it the most. Um, Richard, is she a superhero spy? What's her stories about? You know, it's it's kind of like Indiana Jones meets James Bond. If you were painting in broad strokes, it's got like like the the 007 kind of vibe with um, the adventure of Indiana Jones. wasn't written by Jeff. It was co-created with Andy Hartnell. So, but I mean, definitely, if you're a fan of Indiana Jones or um, James Bond, you you would like Danger Girl. There, or I guess Charlie's Angels too, maybe a little bit. Hey, what's up, Art? What I was thinking about you the other day. I was like, I haven't seen Art what in a while. I was hoping you were okay. Apparently, you're okay. Can Danger Girl beat Blaster Kid? I don't really think about stuff like that, but um, I mean, they're they're sort of different. I think Blaster Kid could kill them, but that's sort of what she's about. She's more military, but Danger Girl, they're crafty, you know. I don't. Does Danger Girl kill people? I don't really, I don't know if they really do violence. <laughs> Boy, nothing makes me feel old like people asking who Danger Girl is. Right. <laughs> well, it's a legitimate question, though. It's fair, fair question. These are really cool. These were for um, the toys, like the, he did like statues or dolls. But he does this for everything. Like, I mean, and he'll go back and forth with the designers too. They did, um, I can't even imagine like the sideshow statues that they did, um, how much Jeff, uh, I mean, I've seen I've seen what Jeff has presented them online, but um, he's, he's, he's not afraid to tell people when it looks off to him. And I think that that's really important to get the quality that he gets out of his toys and stuff like that. So Laura Croft character, um, I mean, I don't, I, I never really got much of a Tomb Raider vibe from them. I mean, Lara Croft was, uh, had similar influences, but I never really got a Tomb Raider vibe from Danger Girl, to be honest. It's definitely Indiana Jones and it's definitely James Bond. 
so less less tomb raider the halcyon days of cliffhanger battle chasers danger girl and crimson what a time to be a comic reader yeah and what's up k-pop junkie how are you yeah they were all good books too and then and then i gotta work on the fourth cliffhanger book for trivia question for everyone what was that called <laughs> these are great the toonie ones kind of i don't know if bruce tim would be the right way but this almost has like the disney um looks a little like hercules like the hercules there there's too many indiana jones and james bond references for him to not have reference from the laser discs yeah it's pot it's totally possible that he did like i said he's he had binders and binders of reference for any character that he would work on he would usually create like a morgue file of you know girls that he thought looked like the character clothes that he thought represented the character i mean like i said he was very meticulous there, it was it was really cool to see i mean i actually think that you know if if you're approaching your comic book art as like a designer and you're gonna have stuff quote unquote on model then it's really to your best interest to be that methodical but not everyone is there's some people that just they get the page of script they lay it out and they um you know draw draw their pages and you know they can have little inconsistencies and things like that and and it's more of a um, spontaneous thing but jeff jeff really liked to do the um prelim stuff just different approach shaman's tears yeah it was steampunk is what i did i i collected shaman's tears for a brief minute that was my grell if i'm not mistaken had a lot of fun with the ps1 danger girl game oh nice <laughs> I think I have it. I'm not positive though, but I believe that I do have it. I, I, I it's weird. I, I can't imagine that I don't. It sucks too because Jeff was going to give me a set of the toys, and I never got them from him. But now so much time has gone by. I feel weird asking him, but he was going to give me a set of the um like the major Maxim and the girls for like helping out we were we were good friends I mean Jeff and I shared an office together for about two and a half years and we just really got along well so a lot of the times it, if, if Jeff was in it would really just be Jeff and I working together alone and we both like music and just you know Star Wars so we had a, we had a lot in common and he's he's a real nice guy very funny very very nice person so so cool this is from the the little um they did like a, a preview book and it had a short story in it with her getting her pants ripped by like an alligator. And this is from that. And it in, introduces Ace. What's the, I can't think what the villain guy's name is. Kind of like a Pierce Brosnan sort of asshole guy. God, I wish we had good comic scene here in Ireland. The only notable series we have here is the League of Volunteers and ain't even good. Oh, bummer. <laughs> Well, I mean, I don't I kind of look at comics as like a global thing though. I mean, I would look at a comic book from anywhere. In fact, I saw it was weird. I got a recommendation for a comic book review channel in Turkey last night. And I think because I had done the Rob De La Torre video and they did something on Rob De La Torre, um uh it recommended it to me. But um yeah, I mean, th there's even people in Turkey that are into comic books and have a comic book scene there. So you can really you can find comic book fans and art anywhere. You got Banshee? Um I don't. What do you mean by Banshee? Character Banshee? <clears throat> this stuff is dope. Yeah, no, he's great. I think he makes it look fun too. You know, that's always I I always think that that's a nice a, a nice characteristic when you're looking at art is if if uh if an artist that you're kind of excited about makes it look fun then it might encourage you to draw where some people are so scary good and you kind of like it can almost intimidate you but i think there's a very human element to this oh and and, and for people that have never seen the sketchbook before these these drawings in the corners if you flip the comic book actually animate so he's got like a 48 like 48 drawings on the sides of the pages that are one is like abby running and then this is her dancing and i think this one on the left actually is another sequence too it's something else i think it's it's sydney with a whip whipping so let's see 
you don't need to retract your message. Where did you say, Silverbolt? Tell me. Now I want to know. Always stand behind. Whatever you say, always stand behind it. Whether it's right or wrong, you just put it out there. Taking stuff back is not good. The drawings on the bottom of each page make an animated flipbook. Yeah, exactly. That's the best compliment, an artist that makes you want to draw. When I said that yesterday for Super Fun Sunday, you know, the there was a, several artists that had an impact on me. The Stranko stuff was great, but the Stranko stuff is quite intimidating because it's so tight and it's so detailed and it's so like constructed. Like it was a lot of like perspective and division of shape. Um, and and then, but the, the Koi Pell stuff had kind of a fun quality where it, it you, even though you know it's a lot of work, it, it did kind of feel like someone just sitting down and drawing and having fun. Uh, at least you guys have the next big thing in comics, Danny Earls. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, Danny is going to do great. He's got all the, the best um, traits that you want going into comics. Oh, mistype. Yeah, no worries. I was just giving you shit. So I, I would have sometimes people talk trash, and this is a long time ago, and I would call them out on it because I don't care. Like, I mean, if someone wants to talk trash, we can go back and forth. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, I, when they delete it, I'm like, what are you deleting it for? Just stick by what you say. But anyway, yeah, I didn't realize how nuts the Stranko stuff was. Yeah, no, that stuff is very, very impressive. He really was driven. Um, yeah, I still don't really like J. Scott Campbell's men. I mean, I, I get that. Uh, he, he, there's a fight scene in the comic where Snake Eyes and Agent Zero fight, I think, or whatever the characters are called. And I, I, I always felt like they looked a little weird. And that's not even men with like their hair and stuff out, but it's like two male bodies. But they, they felt very um, kind of like the cover where the, the shapes were getting a little too maybe distorted for my tastes. But, you know, he's pushing his cartooning skills far catching up with timothy dalton as an a-hole villain yeah right exactly there's a reason his books were always so late he was doing all these sketches for other products like the pinball table well these pages did take him a long time to draw though too you know what i mean there's a lot of work involved in what he does and it's very tight you know i can't i can't stress that enough jeff's stuff is very tight that that takes time when you when your pencils almost look like a work of art in themselves uh that's you know there's a lot of polish involved loved him in hot fuzz oh <laughs> his style could be turned into a cartoon yeah definitely i'm surprised that they really haven't to be honest he's he's broke down his structure so good I'm just kidding I did pick up the Conan free comic book day by Robin Latore. Well, very cool. That's awesome. I'll have to check out Danny Earls. Yeah, he's on Instagram. He's on Twitter. Wait, there was a Gen 13 cartoon just came to my mind. Yeah, that was kind of like, that goes way back though. And I don't know how much of a say Jeff had in that. Because that was like, um, I think Mark Hamill did a voice. Flea from Red Hot Chili Peppers did a voice. He actually, I remember he was looking for voice oh it was for the video game but they had voice actor submissions that he was getting for the characters um when we shared an office and he brought him in one day and we were listening to him and it was so funny hearing different actors try to portray like these characters it was it was really funny his style is very reminiscent of disney animators yeah i definitely think that that's an inspiration for jeff for sure now I need to hunt this down. You can get this. You can get the soft cover of the sketchbook for a pretty good price. I don't think it's going to cost very much. There's a ton of them out there. If you want the, it's slightly oversized, like an absolute edition. It that's expensive, but you get the hardcover book of Danger Girl, and there's a hardcover sketchbook that's oversized. Um, doesn't have more pages, I don't think, but it's just bigger dimensions. But those will run you several hundred dollars. So it depends. Yeah, with Art Adams, definitely Art. He's our, our Art Adams guy. He, I would have to say that at least early on, that was Jeff's probably favorite comic book artist. And there's Jeff right here, and he always, you know, he gives you like some story. You get to read a little bit about like his thoughts on this stuff, and um, you know, there he is at his desk at home. Oh, this is too funny. Is this? Yeah, this is at his house. <laughs> 
I, at Wildstorm, so we should we shared an office at Wildstorm. I had my Star Wars stuff all over the office, and people would always come in and they would always compliment Jeff on all of his Star Wars stuff. And I was like, this, this is all my stuff. He he didn't really he didn't have a ton of stuff that he kept at the studio when we had the smaller office. But yeah, they'd be like, all, oh, that's cool. You guys got a Millennium Falcon. I'm like, that's my Millennium Falcon. Jeff just does awesome art. I'm the I'm the toy nerd, but Jeff had Jeff's home offices. Oh my God, they were the coolest room that you'd ever seen. He has so much great stuff. Oh my God. So I think that we're at the end, but that was really fun. I I love looking at this sketchbook. I've se seen it hundreds of times. I never really get I never really get tired of it. To be honest, it's it's always fun. Some of his pencils. Were those cartoon women part of your office you shared too? <laughs> <laughs> this is great i love this pose right here this is so good we we had a gen 13 it was a fairchild poster on our door and <laughs> this is really funny so the first office i shared with jeff was a big office at wildstorm called the green room and the green room originally had j scott campbell alex garner travis troy hubs and tom ranny and travis and troy moved to la so there was open space and I moved into the green room. So then it was myself, Garner, Tom Ranney, me, and then Adam Hughes. But a lot of times it was just J. Scott Campbell and I there by ourselves or, or actually more Adam Hughes and myself. And so one day I walked in and they were having a meeting in our office. It was really weird. Like I walked in and there was Jeff, Jeff Marriott, who's an editor, but he's also a writer. He created, um, Winona Earp and also um, I think Desperados it was called. He was having a meeting with a couple other guys. So we had the there was the Fairchild poster was on the door. And I kind of walked in. I was like, oh, oh, sorry, I didn't realize anyone was in here. And as I was walking out for some weird reason, I patted Fairchild's butt on the poster, like it was a door poster. I patted her ass and I then I walked away and I was like, why did I just do that? <laughs> it was really funny super awesome work there yeah jeff is great but yeah that was really embarrassing i just for a split because her butt was so round like her ass was like sticking out and i just went like <laughs> i scanned that page with a giant fair child on my channel oh okay like you have on your youtube channel the it was a door poster so the the poster we had on our door was probably like five feet tall obviously they do great work but i wish there was more of a creative community here on my island oh yeah Scott is an awesome influence on my work along with Joe Matt. And look, you actually call him Scott. It, it, if we all call him Jeff, but he goes by Scott more now. So I was I always have to kind of correct myself. I not correct myself. I mean, he he knows that like it's hard to switch when you've called someone Jeff for 20 years to switch it up. But um yeah, so look, there is lunchtime lounge with Rich. We're going to I'll have to, uh, Rick, I'll check out your stuff. I'm, I don't know if I follow you online, but everyone's complimenting your work. So I'll, 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 is your Instagram R-E-I-Q? If it is, I'll head over there and I'll, I'll give you a follow. And also anyone, if you want to promote anything, please do. Love the episode, Richard. Play them while drawing. Oh, very cool. Thank you. I wasn't 100% sure if, if I pissed off this one guy. Hold on, let's go back and find it. I couldn't tell, like, you tell me what you think. Where was the comment? He took he took my game over comment too seriously. Where was it? This one, Gia, Gianluca Strandi. Because uh, he goes, take care at the end of it. It's this one right here. Is he pissed? To all artists here asking about AI, follow the concept art group of artists. There you'll find more answers than the legal implications. Not someone who shouts game over, take care. That sounded like a goodbye to me. <laughs> Okay, I'll, I'll I'll check out your channel. I may actually even follow you. It's possible. Okay, cool. I'll check it out. I'm excited now. This is cool. How do you pronounce your name? R E I Q. Yeah, no worries. I'm now you got you guys got me pumped. I appreciate that you follow my channel. If you'd like to ever come on, um, people are always trying to kick me in the butt to have more guests. I'd love to have you come on. You probably, uh, based on what I'm reading, you probably have ten times the amount of followers than me, if not more. So um, anyway, but but uh, yeah, I'll run over and immediately I'll sub to your channel. I'm excited. 
I need to I need a, I need a good drawing channel and an art that inspires me. So look, you guys have a great day. I'm gonna get to work on Blaster Kid and um oh awesome. Okay, are, are you on Instagram? I'll I'll find your Instagram and I can direct message you there. But that, that would be really fun. I need to have Eric Kennedy on again too. We were gonna do a show. So look, you guys have a great day. I will see you tomorrow. If you have recommendations for sketchbooks, put them in the description box um, below below the, the the stream when it goes up. And um, yeah, we'll we'll figure out what uh, we'll do tomorrow. Lots of boobs on his channel. There you go. You can't go wrong with that. Okay, have a good one. Yeah, no worries. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. See you later.